Pivot has recently changed how they do the graphing and the plotting um, in their labs. And so what I'm doing here is just giving you a updated video on how to actually do just the graphing. Now, it doesn't particularly matter which data we're using for the graphing. Um, the graphing um, new software is going to be all the same. I happen to be using the first beer Lampert law one. And what I'm looking at in this case is the copper sulfate. And I'm measuring the percent transmission as a function of concentration. And I'm just going to graph that. So with that in mind, we're going to collect our data. So I've done that. We're going to make sure that we have our columns labeled. I tend to use a single letter because when we're done and we do a linear regression, which is just our best fit line, what this is going to do is this is going to use these single letters as your X or Y variables. And it makes it a bit easier to follow. My units here are molarity for my concentration. And I'm just going to plug my data in from that experiment. So 0.4 molar in this case, and it doesn't really matter again, which lab we're looking at. All that matters is that we think about how pivot is going to be graphing it. I have percent transmission here, my second one, and I'm just gonna type in the data I've gotten. Uh, when you end up doing this, don't use my data. I kind of went through a little quickly and a little sloppily. And I'm gonna do absorbance because concentration is not directly proportional to percent transmittance. It is directly proportional to the minus log of the transmittance. And that value happens to be absorption. So we're gonna to switch to absorption. Now we can let the data table do our math for us. So if I go here and I click on these three dots, I can change the formula. Changing the formula means we're gonna do some math. And so what I'm gonna do into that column is I'm gonna put the minus log I want of the transmission because that's the formula for absorbance. But again, the whole point here is to just sort of figure out how to do the math. It's the um, absorbance is actually minus log of the transmission divided by 100. So it's no longer percent, it's just a fraction. And I'm gonna put the end parentheses and I'm gonna submit, and it's gonna do all the math all the way down, ignoring the sig figs. So you go, okay, fantastic, what do we do with this? Well, we need to graph this. And we need to graph this and we need to get a best fit line for this. So to do this, we're gonna have our data and we're gonna come down here where it says graph and we're gonna click on this settings. And we say, okay, what are we gonna do with this? Well, we need to take and we need to figure out what we're doing. And it says, oh, you hit the curve fit and there isn't a curve. That's because we have to configure our axes first. So if I wanna figure out what my Y axis is, my Y axis is going to be my absorbance and certainty you can take and put some arrows in there we don't need that for our labs here and i'm going to hit done now i'm going to go down and i'm going to figure my horizontal axis now it can't graph until it knows what you want on the axes so i'm going to put done i don't want any uncertainty on that either and i'm going to have some data points and you go all right what are we going to do with this where well, we're going to take and we're going to put a curve fit in there and this is going to allow us to choose the fit so we're going to pick linear because that is what this is supposed to be. And then I'm going to click done. And so I have a fit here. It's a mediocre on the linear, but that's all right. We're just going to work with it right now. And what is going to come out of it is our best fit line. And so if we look at this now, we have a best fit line that's going to tell us here where Y is equal to MX plus B. And um, here our Y is going to be our absorbance, our X is going to be our concentration, and A and B here are actually where A is our slope and B here is our intercept. So we now have not only our data that we've collected, we have done our math on our data, we've gone down here to our curve fit after we have selected our axes, make sure you got to do that first, and then when you're done with that, it is going to automatically take and put a best fit line on there. Now, the other difference that we have when we have the new pivots is that instead of giving you the R squared value, it's giving you the RMSE. Now, the R squared tells you kind of how good the fit is, where one is the best kind of fit you can get one to one. And this, as it deviates from one, your fit of your curve to your data becomes worse. The RMSE is different. It is going to tell you how far these data points are on average from your line. 
And so what we're looking for on an RMSE in terms of a good fit is we're looking at the smallest possible number. So if you're comparing multiple forms of a line um, and you're trying to figure out which is the best fit, the smallest RMSE is going to be your best fit.